So not even McLaren will repair this 720S that I bought from Amsterdam. Wouldn't be allowed to. No. So it looks like it's down to us. Flying to Amsterdam to spend £60,000 on this Rex 720S is beginning to look like a big mistake. Oh my god. After bringing it back to the UK, I was told McLaren wouldn't allow for the carbon tub to be repaired. All we can repair is about an area about that big. Now what then? Well now it leaves it down to me to find some way to get this McLaren back on the road. How are we going to get this off this trailer? <laughs> don't worry, I've got a plan. Okay, I don't think this is going to be as easy. This is going to be easy. Oh no, I'm going to do it. He knows ours is going to do it. First step was to get the McLaren off the trailer, which is easier said than done. One side has no suspension, wheels or wheel hub. What was that? But we managed to get the car high enough to get all four arms of the ramp underneath it. And then we could lift it up and off the trailer. Do the rock test. I think that's as certified as it's going to get. We're in the air. So we're still not quite sure where to start, but at least we've got it off the trailer now. And... I think the main decider on whether this is going to be repairable or not is if the engine actually runs. And we almost got it started in the last video. Whoa! Ah! But there was an oil leak. It's coming out, oil. Something's oh, coming out, yeah, yeah, stop, stop, stop. I hope that's coming from the gearbox. Yeah, it turns out it is actually coming from the gearbox. Look. Oh, no. So that's... <laughs> oh, no. So this is a gearbox oil cooler, which is actually on the back of the gearbox, which cools the oil for the gearbox, surprising there. What we want to do is try and get it started, but we don't want all the oil to come out like that. So, so I reckon we do a professional, a professional repair with some filler. And that's exactly what we're going to do, but not with filler, with Tiger Seal instead. We just need to come up with a temporary fix, enough to hold the oil in so we can start the car. And I'm hoping this will work. You're doing great, Matt. You're doing great. Keep it going. I'm going to shout if it won't stop. Ready? Yeah. Saying go to McLaren Centre, but I'm here. Here we go. <laughs> first time! Oh, what? Why did you do it first time? It sounds mint. Okay. It sounds wicked. It sounds yeah. well good. Yeah? Switch it off. Oh. What's happened? What's that happened? sounded good first time. That's mint. What was coming out? Is something come out? What's happened? It's coming out as repairs. No, it's you're joking, really? It's coming out the tiger seal. <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, that's not good. It's cycling out. Now. Don't use Tiger Seal to fix your gearbox cooler. Even though the gearbox oil was still coming out, it is great news that the engine is running and sounds good. This means it might actually be worth repairing this thing, providing we can find a way to fix the carbon on the top. And although McLaren said that they wouldn't allow it to be fixed, doesn't mean it can't be fixed. The McLaren is in. First step is to get that door off. To see what we're exactly working with here, we need to expose all the area where the carbon tub is damaged. So we're starting off by removing that really damaged door. The front suspension and brake disc all look good, which is a bonus. And now we're just removing the arch lining so we can access the wiring connectors, which go in through the door. And once we disconnected that wiring, we can slide it through the arch, and then start to remove the inner arch lining so we can access the hinge bolts for the door. Oh, oh the weight, the what weight. Put it on the floor then, uh, on the floor. As a McLaren technician, that is not repairable. Not repairable. <laughs> we now need to expose more of this damage down here and uh, see if we can get our carbon fiber repairs on it. Now the door's off, we've got a much clearer view of where the carbon tub's damaged. But I wanna make sure that that damage hasn't gone any further in the car. So I'm gonna remove the driver's side seat first. Two bolts at the front of the rails, two bolts at the back, and then one bolt holding the seat belt onto it. So here's, this is the tub. And, ooh. 
Is it damaged in here? Looks alright in there. It does look alright in here. But this seal off. So what um McLaren have said is that this part here, if it was here, it would be repairable. But this part here in the bottom, this this is where all the strength is apparently. So like repairing that is quite dangerous, especially if you can't if you don't get it right, but it's I think it's gone underneath as well. It's like all the way underneath. Is it all the way underneath? Yeah. Oh no. Now the benefits of having a carbon fibre tub is obviously it's lightweight and it's super rigid which helps for track use. The downside is that when it becomes damaged it's almost impossible to repair. Especially in the place where mine's damaged. I actually think we, I think the whole thing is going to have to be retubbed. I think that is literally going to be our only option. So if we retub the whole thing, I know it's a massive job, but it all depends on how much a tub's actually going to going to cost. Let's call McLaren and our first sort of let's let's see how much a tub is from McLaren before we go anywhere, and then we can make this decision. Hi, Drew Park Farmer speaking. How can I help? Hello, uh, this might be a bit of a, a weird one, um, but I've got a McLaren 720S and it looks like it's going to need a full replacement tub. Is that something that you can buy or is the car done for? Um, it is something you can buy. Oh, okay. Limit, limitation being McLaren are fairly closed with supplying one externally. Right. Um, so it would be a repair that would probably have to take place inside either a McLaren workshop or a McLaren body shop. I don't suppose you have like a set price or anything like that that's like just so we've got a rough price on whether we can say like okay this is worth it or it's completely out of the ballpark. No they haven't got anything to, um, listed on the portal now for us unfortunately. So it's price on application for a new tub from McLaren, which just sounds expensive. And even if you go for it, the work has to be carried out by McLaren themselves, which is understandable. Well, what's our other options? We then looked on eBay and found a second-hand tub for £35,000. That's just not worth it. Like, I think that tub has come off this car here. 35, yeah it was, yeah, so we paid 60 grand for a full car, 35 grand for a tub, that is just not, it's not looking good. So, we were stumped, until today. We've got a full McLaren 720S tub. Now, this was way cheaper than I ever expected. Five and a half at thousand pounds for a full tub. And check this out. You can see, I can literally lift a car up. There's a few issues what we've found already though, which uh, I don't really know what we're gonna do. This is a right hand drive tub and we've got a left hand drive car. So all these holes here, if you see here, this hole is slightly bigger than that hole. That's got different parts cut out of it. That is for the brake reservoir. And then this is for the steering rack. I would look of actually switching it over from a left hand drive car to a right hand drive car. But to do that, we'd need a new steering rack, a new dashboard, a new wiring loom, and new brake lines, along with loads of other stuff. And if you see on this car, well, the dashboard's all intact, so there's not really much point in actually replacing that. It just causes more unnecessary costs. So, so even though we now have a tub, which was super cheap, I didn't expect to run into the issue with the two tubs being different from right-hand drive to left-hand drive. But in the meantime, we've got no time to waste. The only way to get this car back on the road is to switch the tubs over, whether we're converting it to right hand drive or staying with left hand drive. And what we've got to do now is remove every part that's damaged on the car so we know what we need to order. With the tub being five and a half and the car being 60, we're looking good. It's okay. Oh. Oh, that's 
going to be expensive. Oh, that is bent. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Oh. But more and more damaged components keep showing up. It is really not looking good for this McLaren. Switching over the tubs is going to be a huge job. We literally will be building a McLaren 720S from scratch. One of the biggest jobs I've ever done before. Now, although we can't find out exactly how this McLaren crashed, we can find out most of the history of this car. And that's by checking it out using Car Vertical. And you guys can all do the same with your cars. Whoa, is that the standard? Whoa. Turns out it wasn't standard because this standard exhaust has a back box in it. And this one is just pipes. Anyway, back to Car Vertical. And look at this Mustang that I checked out using Car Vertical. I just popped in the VIN, and then immediately I can see two yellow lights, which means they need my attention. The good thing is that the car's never been stolen, and there's no outstanding finance on there. But one yellow light is showing that the car's been involved in an accident, and I can even see the photos of when the car was auctioned off at the Car Crash Auction website. On top of that, it's also had a mileage rollback. I can see the full mileage graph and then the point the mileage was rolled back on. Whoa! Whoa. That's quite a cool design actually. I can even see here a full timeline of the car, when the car was bought, when the car was sold and this car was even exported to the UK from America. So please make sure you have checked your car out using Car Vertical or a car that you're potentially about to buy. You can do so by clicking the link in the description box below and with help from my code here, you can save yourself a nice bit of discount on the check. That's Car Vertical. Check this out, so this is aftermarket exhaust and I don't know if you can see the logo there, but they're Lorini downpipes. Take it off. Better not drop it. It's a Lorena. It's Lorena. Oh, how much? Oh. Is, how much is a Lorini exhaust? It's a Lorini system. How much is a Lorini exhaust then? Lorini exhaust. Found it. Seven thousand two hundred and twenty-one pounds just for that back bit. You can't replace that then. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know which looks worse, this or that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a point where this one looks worse than that. Yeah. Oh, it might be now. <laughs> <laughs> you may have noticed, but we started to take the engine out already. Oh, it did a wee. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the fluid that just came out there was from the suspension. McLaren have this special suspension, which is all linked between the four corners. The fluid is pressurized in a corner, depending how the car sits when it's driving taking off a few of these um, coolant hoses and whatever else is attaching it to the engine. And that's what we've got to do to take the engine out. We're just disconnecting anything that connects the engine to the car. It would be nice just to unbolt the frame with the engine on and pull it away from the tub. But that's not quite how it works here. The engine is on a separate tray, which we have to unbolt from the rear frame. Now I'm dropping out all the oil for the engine of course, this is a dry sump engine, so the oil is stored in a tank next to it. Then all the coolant or what's left of it. And then to remove the engine from the rear frame, we've got to remove these grommets here so we can access the bolts underneath it. This is a super long process and we've got to remember how all of this went back in. So when I remove a bolt, I'm just putting it back into the place where it came from. Hopefully this will help on reassembly. There's just a few final bits to come off. Coolant's disconnected, aircon's disconnected, only fuel, which is not disconnected, but we think that it's these two red and green lines there, which is going to the fuel rail, and we'll find out now when fuel goes everywhere in a minute. Feed, this is gonna squirt, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> now with the fuel disconnected, there's only a few final things connecting the engine to the actual rear frame of the car. So all that's holding it in at the minute is this engine mount here, well, gearbox mount, which is bolted all the way through here, which you need 9,050 extensions to get to. And then it's all on this big frame at the bottom, which is separate to the main frame here. So I'm just gonna undo that now. On the right angle. Oh, this is where you find out. Oh, there we are. 
This is where you find out if you've le left anything connected. Yeah, normally we normally do. Strength. More energy. This bolt holding the gearbox mount was extremely tight. <laughs> Is that moving? No, I'm holding it. So tight, we had to get two huge lever bars. And even then it didn't come undone. <laughs> it started snapping the tools. <laughs> but eventually, we got it out. Every little bit of Loctite is on that. That is a bolt and half, isn't it? And that should be the final pieces holding the engine to the rear frame. With that all disconnected, we should be able to raise the car up and the engine should stay on the floor. How many hoses and wires connected that thing? <laughs> Another achievement I never thought would happen when I started rebuilding cars on my driveway. You never know what's coming next. Okay, we finally have the engine out, which is probably one of the first steps. Then all this frame has got to come off, all the wiring and there's so much more and start to build it up onto that shell over there. But the engine's out and the good discovery, the good discovery was we have a Lurini sports cats and downpipes, a Lurini exhaust, it's worth like 8,000 pounds or so. And potentially, potentially let us know, I think whilst we've got this engine off, do we upgrade the turbos and make it go a lot faster when it goes back in the other shell? Oh, I dread to think how much more there is, but thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Oh my. He's definitely going to need a new one. <laughs> What's broken? Yes. Uh, not a lot. Like a drug I just can't deny it.